Hi, it's Midnight Mule, and this is the third video where I want to talk about what the Watchtower have written regarding Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, first and last. In the first video, I looked at their current teaching, and in the second video, I looked at the 1917 book, The Finished Mystery, which talks about Revelation, looks at it verse by verse, and what they said then about these words. So if I just... Um, want to show you this look at we look at their teachings so in the Old Testament where it says first and last there's no problem in 1917 and in 2020 that means Jehovah no one argues with that at all in Revelation 22 13 when they say first and last the 1917 teaching which was at least overseen by Rutherford was that it was Jesus and the 2020 teaching was that it was Jehovah. The Alpha and Omega in 1917 was Jesus. In 2020, they're saying it means Jehovah. The beginning and the end in Revelation in 1917 was Jesus. In 2020, the teaching is that it's Jehovah. So what are we going to look at? Oh, yeah. So we, we had uh, looked at this book briefly last time. To look at a paragraph in there and that book is from 1981 and the paragraph we looked at talked about the finished mystery and it said about uh, they had a more up-to-date explanation in light and you may remember we said about light it's a two volume or two books they call it for light so I'm going to start this video by looking at what it is they said in light regarding revelation now, light is very different to the finished mystery. The finished mystery looks at every verse and picks apart every word, more or less, certainly every phrase, and gives an explanation for it. In light, Rutherford just rattles on about all sorts of things and makes some references to Revelation. So there's plenty of verses in Revelation he doesn't talk about. And I, I guess there are some books where they do talk about some of these verses, but I've not come across them yet. I will... Have a good look for them sometime, no doubt. So back to, this is from Babylon the Great. Yes, that was talking about light, which is where we're going to be going just now. So here's the light book. It was written in 1930. So the part I'm going to show you is to do of Revelation 21.6. This is what Rutherford's referring to, referring to. And he said to me, they have come to pass. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. To anyone thirsting, I will give from the spring of the water of life free. And let's see what he's say, going to say about this verse in 21.6. So I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So it's the end of um, page 232 and the start of 233. So I've just shoved these two pages together here. Again, the voice of Jehovah is heard by John from the throne of heaven. The remnant discern that voice of Jehovah through his word and see the fulfillment thereof in these last days. So I just want to say something about that because of what's going on in the world at the moment where many, most of the world I think is currently in lockdown. Certainly around here we are, we're not allowed to leave our property etc. So the watchtower are getting very excited at the moment saying, oh this is the last days, this is the last of the last days. We're now in the end of the last of the last days. And so in this thing we've just looked at now in 1930, we're looking at Rutherford's talking about we're in the last days. And a few years after this, he started saying the last days began in 1914. Before this time, they said the last days began in 1799. So the last days have actually been going on a very long time. Of course, in 1925, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all of these were supposed to come back and live in Beth Sarim, that mansion that was built especially for them in, I think it was in California. And then in 1941, of course, that was the end. No point getting married, no point having children because we're right at the end. Wait to win the Paradise Earth. And of course, 75, they got excited and they're getting excited now that all oh, this, this could be, this could be the end. And bad things happen. There are much worse viruses out there. There have been, if you look at the population killed, this is, almost certainly not going to reach the level of some of the worst ones that have happened in the past. Anyway, so that was just, I, I digress there because 
back in 1930s talking about in these last days and he was trying to get people excited keep trying to get people excited Armageddon's about to happen so you better not leave just in case we're right because otherwise you're going to get killed in Armageddon anyway sorry again the voice of Jehovah that voice says and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end so in 1913 1930 Rutherford was saying Jehovah is the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end okay now this is the earliest reference I can see to where they switch from it being Jesus to being Jehovah now this is the finished mystery of God very similar title to the 1917 book but slightly different and this is from 1969 now the part I'm about to show you is talking about Revelation 1 17 to 18 but the part I show you starts with Revelation 1 8 then they talk about Revelation 22 13 then it goes back to saying how that has a context with Revelation 1 17 to 18 so if we just look at these three verses now before we hop into the book Revelation 1 8 I am the Alpha and the Omega says Jehovah God the one who is and the one who was and who is coming the Almighty and then in Revelation 22 13 I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last the beginning and the end and again they attribute that to Jehovah and then Revelation 1 17 to 18 when I saw him I fell as dead at his feet this is John speaking and he laid his right hand on me and said do not be afraid I am the first and the last and the living one and I became dead so the Watchtower Society is saying Jehovah is Alpha and Omega therefore Alpha Omega first last beginning and the end that is also Jehovah so Jehovah is the beginning and the end um, but in 17 it's clearly either Jehovah died or else it's Jesus who's saying I am the first and the last but over here it says Jehovah is the first and the last so now we're going to see how they explain this one and so Jehovah God again emphasizes his being the first and the last by saying in Revelation 1 8 I am the Alpha and the Omega says Jehovah God the one who is and the one who is coming the Almighty and in Revelation 22 13 he says I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last the beginning and the end in my head hence in speaking of himself as the first and the last in Revelation 1 17 to 18 is the Lord Jesus Christ claiming to be Jehovah God the Almighty not at all but he is referring to himself as the first and the last in another sense in another connection how is that so what they're going to say about this this was in connection this was in connection with death and life the glorified Jesus Christ in heaven was then as he says the living one but what about before then I became dead he says that was when he became a man and lived for 33 and a half years down here on earth his enemies then put him to death so what their argument is is when he says he's the first and the last what it actually means is oh he was the first created being and he was the last of God's Jehovah's created beings because then, then after that Jesus created everything and they don't actually justify that but we'll look at what they're saying but one more interesting thing about this particular passage in the book I want to show you it says his enemies then put him to death by impaling him on a stake outside Jerusalem in 1969 the teaching was that he was impaled on a stake which means the stake actually passed through his body that's what impaling means and it's true that the Romans did sometimes impale people there's nothing in the Bible to suggest that he was impaled I did a video a while back regarding the torture stake or the cross and I looked at what the Watchtower say about that so if you're interested in that I recommend you watch that video maybe after this video and I wish I was aware of this text when I was doing that because I certainly would have referred to it then but they've since gone away from this impaling idea again and say oh no he was hung on a torture stake yes I find some of the things they write very interesting revelation its grand climax is at hand here it is and this book 
was uh, see the copyright is 1988 now this does have a slightly embossed image and in previous videos I have been trying to get a nice light on the embossed image but you can take my word for it this is a quite a poor piece of art and it's not a very deep embossing it's really quite unimpressive compared to Rutherford's book Rutherford's covers had quite a bit of design in them and they it, they looked nice I know you can't judge a book by its cover and Rutherford's books would be a good example of that anyway revelation its grand climax is at hand on page 27 we have this section here and I'm going to start over here this is talking about the first and the last and now it's quoting the Bible and he laid his right hand upon me and said do not be fearful I am the first and the last and the living one that's Revelation 1 17 to 18 they then talk about Isaiah 44 6 in Isaiah 44 6 Jehovah rightly described his own position as the one and only almighty God saying I am the first and the last and besides me there is no God so here is Isaiah 44 6 this is what Jehovah says the king of Israel and his repurchaser Jehovah of armies I am the first and I am the last there is no God but me so a couple of things to remember here Jehovah saying I am the first and the last and keep in mind because I'm going to refer to this later there is no God but me but for now we're going to look at the first and the last business Isaiah 44 6 Jehovah says he's the first and the last but then in this text they have a little asterisk here which refers to this information down here now what this says is in the original Hebrew Isaiah 44 6 there is no definitive article with the words first and last whereas in Jesus description of himself in the original Greek at Revelation 1 17 the definitive, ar definitive article is found so grammatically Revelation 1 17 indicates a title whereas Isaiah 44 6 describes Jehovah's Godship they offer no evidence for supporting their view so issues I have with this couple of issues one they're looking at something written in Hebrew and of course they there would have been a certain writing style and grammar associated with that looking at something written in Greek and saying aha it's missing the the in the Hebrew therefore it's not the same thing now that doesn't hold water one they're comparing two different languages but two Jesus says in the Greek and they admit to this Jesus says I am the first and the last which implies there is only one first and one last so if Jehovah God is saying I am if he says I am first and last Jesus then clarifies it saying there's only one because it's the first and the last so he's still equating it and another thing that I think is worth considering here in the New World Translation they've put in the word the now they've just said it should be I am first and I am last if that's the case why does their apparently super accurate translation have the word the there they've put in the word the because it belongs there so I think it's ridiculous for them to say this should be I am first and I am last when clearly the meaning in English would be I am the first and I am the last and their idea about oh one's a title and one's something else for me I don't feel it uh, quite as that but we're not finished yet we're going to keep looking at this paragraph so after the asterisk it says when Jesus presents himself by the title the first and the last he is not claiming the quality of Jehovah the grand creator he is using a title properly bestowed on him by God so he's not claiming a quality the implication here is I feel nowhere does Jesus or is it implied that Jesus is equal with Jehovah it's not in the Bible now what they've done here is they say Jesus isn't Jehovah Jesus isn't God that's a fundamental teaching of the watchtower sorry about that noise fundamental teaching of the watchtower therefore it can't mean that here so what can it mean oh I know what it can mean it can mean the first and last of his creation nowhere in the Bible does it say that uh, Jehovah created Jesus and it was the first thing he created they read that into the text somewhere else so I want to look at here where it says he's not claiming equality with Jehovah let's see if that's true from their Bible the New World Translation 
So I'm going to look at a handful of verses. Now, so this is John 5, 15 to 18. And if you think I'm getting these verses wrong or misunderstanding them, please leave comments below because I'm interested in looking at these things. For this reason, so Jesus had been performing miracles on the Sabbath. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things during the Sabbath. But he answered them, My father has kept working until now, and I keep working. This is why the Jews began seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. So the Jews recognised that what Jesus was saying was making himself equal to God. Now Jesus could have said, oh no, 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 that's not what I'm saying at all. I, I was created by God. All I was saying was da, 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 something else. The Jews absolutely knew what Jesus was saying. Jesus was making himself equal with God and Jesus didn't correct them because their understanding was correct. John 12, 44 to 45. However, Jesus called out and said, whoever puts faith in me puts faith not only in me, but also in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees also the one who sent me. Oh, so whoever sees me sees also the one who sent me. So Jesus is saying, if you see me, you're seeing the father. Now, that is surely making Jesus equal to Jehovah. Whoever sees me sees also the one who sent me. It's one and the same. But I'm not finished yet. John 15, 23 to 25. Whoever hates me also hates my father. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have both seen me and hated me as well as the father. But this happened in order to fulfill the word written in their law. They hated me without cause. Whoever hates me hates my father hated me as well as my father so do you think it's possible to hate one person and not hate another person of course it is and yet here Jesus is saying they hate whoever hates me hates my father it's not possible to hate Jesus and yet not hate the father because there's obviously an equality here let's keep going Philippians 2 5 6 and in my opinion, they completely mush this up in the English. But fortunately, they have other versions on their website. So Philippians 2, 5, 6. Keep this mental attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus. This is Paul writing. Who, although he was existing in God's form, gave no consideration to a seizure, namely that he should be equal to God. He was existing in God's form, equal to God. Now, I, I struggled when I first read this. In the new world translation because seizure to me is like when someone has an epileptic fit and i had to check out when of course seizure here actually means to grasp grab hold of but the choice of word seizure gave no consideration to a seizure is a very clumsy way of writing it name that he should be equal to god this is really messy and if you look at it long enough i think you can get it to line up to what other versions of the Bible say but I do find the New World Translation difficult if anyone watching this uses the New World Translation I'd like to recommend you look at other versions which you may find easier to read now they have the King James Version on their website so I feel it's okay to look at that and of course it's what um, Rutherford would have used and Russell would have used let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So Jesus was in the form of God and he didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God. Why didn't he consider it robbery? Because he was equal to God. There was nothing being robbed. And see how thought it not robbery to be equal with God. They've written it as gave no consideration to a seizure, namely that he should be equal to God. That's just making it really obscure. I'm going to move my floaty head now. So let's look at the, I want to look at the um, what they call the Kingdom Interle Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. Again, this is their work. It's available on their website. So here we have the Greek and the English equivalent word for word as best they can do it from the Greek, or as they consider the best they can do it. This be you minding in you, which also in Christ Jesus, 
who in form of God existing, not snatching, he considered to be equal things to God. So in the form of God existing, we can take out the word things anywhere. In the, when you look at the kingdom uh, interlinear translation, they sometimes put something in brackets. That's because they've added it and it doesn't belong there and it changes the meaning just about probably every time that I've seen brackets, they're changing the meaning. So we can ignore that. And then it's uh, equal to God. So the Greek that they're using, who in form of God, not snatching, he considered to be equal to God. So the Greek that they're using, and then that they that you look at, it's on their website, is they're saying it wasn't snatching or it wasn't robbery to be considered equal to God. All right. Now, all Jehovah's Witnesses will be familiar with John 1 1 because they would get asked about this time and time again. So they've got an answer. And if they did just the tiniest bit of research, they'd find out that their answer isn't correct. However, I've thrown this verse in here because it is another example of the quality of God. So the New World Translation says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Now, remember we looked at Isaiah 44. What was it? Isaiah I want to say 44 6 I might be wrong but we looked at Isaiah earlier anyway where Jesus says that he's the first and the last and he said something like and beside me there is no God there is only one God that's Jehovah so if there's only one God how can they say that the word was a God now a Jehovah's Witness may well say that oh no no because money's a God therefore you can have the word a god but the thing about money being a god is it's a false god it is not a god with any sort of power and you can make a god of anything so plenty of examples in the bible where people would make a god out of wood or out of bronze or out of gold but it wasn't actually a god it was a false god it wasn't a real god there is only one god isaiah 44 6 there's only one god so why does it not bother Jehovah's Witnesses to say that the Word was a God? And in case you're unsure, later on in John 1 it says something like, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So no one's arguing that the Word here means Jesus. So effectively in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was a God. Ah, but how can there be more than one God? You can't have more than one God. Now the King James and just about any other version of the Bible, certainly any credible version of the Bible, is rendered as in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So anyone reading the King James is never going to from that think Jesus is a created being because you can't get it from the King James. But keep going, let's look at the uh, interlinear. In beginning was the Word and the Word was toward the God and God was the Word. Now the Watchtower's argument here is here we have the word the, the God, I think that's ton theon, and here we have an God, ke theos. And they're saying because it doesn't say the, therefore it means a, there should be a, an indefinite article there. Which if you just look at a little bit of Greek and the explanations behind this, that is not the case, that is not how this Greek would be correctly rendered in English and it should be God but even ignoring that even if you don't want to know any Greek we can still look at their argument here so and God therefore because the is missing there they put the word a so and the word was a God but what about this in beginning it doesn't say which beginning it could be a beginning I oh, know in the beginning so <laughs> They didn't write in a beginning was the word they put in the beginning why did they write the beginning because that is obviously what the greek text is saying just like here this is clearly god it is not a god so in this one verse they're being inconsistent and if the watchtower was a person then inconsistency could be one of their many middle names keep going we're looking at equality jesus equality with god is it there in the bible anywhere this is Colossians 2 9 again still the New World Translation because it is in him that all the fullness of the divine quality dwells bodily again another 
clumsily rendered verse in my opinion in the king james it has for in him this is talking about jesus for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in jesus all the fullness of the godhead bodily in the new world translation they have all the fullness of the divine quality dwells bodily okay so somehow they think there's quality in there let's have a look at the interlinear again because in him is dwelling down all the fullness of the divinity bodily they've put in the word quality here which somehow wards it down and makes oh no look it's like that quality is not in the greek it doesn't belong there the greek that they were using was all the fullness of the divinity bodily which could correctly be said as all the fullness of the godhead bodily all of the fullness everything to do with the divinity dwelt bodily in jesus so uh, if the new world translation is the only one you use i'd recommend even if you want to play safe and stay on the watchtower website at least look at the king james sometimes on the watchtower website okay now this one i'm showing several verses to give the context so this is jesus talking to the jews and he's berating them somewhat here so this is john 10 26 to 33 but you do not believe because you are not my sheep so jesus is telling the jews that they are not his sheep okay my sheep listen to my voice and i know them and they follow me so if somebody read the bible read everything that jesus said in the new testament and they looked at any religious organization not just the watchtower but some of the other churches and you could see are they following what jesus said if you actually look at what jesus really said if they're not they're not jesus's sheep i give them everlasting life so jesus gives everlasting life and they will be they will by no means ever be destroyed and no one will snatch them out of my hand what my father has given me is something greater than all other things and no one can snatch them out of the hand of the father so they can't be snatched out of his hand or the father's hand and i and the father are one once again the jews picked up stones to stone him jesus replied to them i displayed to you many fine works from the father for which of these works are you stoning me the jews answered him we are not stoning you we are stoning you not for a fine work but for blasphemy for you although being a man make yourself a god so you make yourself a god so here the jews were going to stone jesus because he was making himself out to be it's actually god but they're saying make himself out to be a god now what does the where we now the king james says verse 33 the jews answered him saying for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself god so here this is the jews recognized that what jesus was saying and doing was making himself to be god and so that's what the blasphemy was that's why they're going to kill him kingdom interlinear answered to him the jews about fine work not we're stoning you but about blasphemy and because you man being you're making yourself god and again this is the same logic as john 1 1 making yourself god this is clearly meaning god this is not meaning a god but they've put it as a little g here when they're translating it because they want you to want to make you think it's a god so that was a bit of a detour there so they're saying when jesus presents himself by the title the first and the last he is not claiming equality with jehovah the implication being nowhere in the bible can you get jesus as equal with jehovah actually there are plenty of places in the bible you can get that jesus is equal with jehovah and now they're saying about he's using the title properly bestowed on him by god which from elsewhere we know means because the watchtower teach he was the first of god's creation and the last thing he created but nowhere in the bible does it say that jesus was created by god i'm aware of what their arguments are maybe one day i'll look at those i think there's three or four verses they use and see how well they stand up to honest scrutiny so in summary the 1917 teachings most of these phrases all of them in the new testament meant jesus and then from 1930 to current day 
they all mean Jehovah. And when I finished putting all this together, I thought maybe what I should do is look at the Bible and then look at the context to see if we can get from the context if any of these are actually clear, because they're clearly all over the place with this. Uh, what we do know is, and I've said it before, and no doubt I'll say it many times, the 1917 book was the last book that was written before Jesus apparently chose them because they were giving out proper meat at the right time to his followers, which implies Jesus read this book, knew what was in it. And then it was after the failed prophecy of 1925 and when Rutherford was saying he speaks for God, that Rutherford changed this all to Jehovah and they've not changed it back since. All they've done is gone all over the place trying to explain how they justify the Jehovah thing. So I hope some of that was interesting. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Leave it in the comments. If it was helpful or useful, fine. Please leave it in the comments. Likes and subscribes are very helpful and good. And don't forget to ring the little bell by the subscribe button if you want to know if and when I make a new video. Thanks. Bye.